Hello and welcome to Teach Me English. This is your host Muhammad Sinaul Ansari, and today we would do a topic. The name is yellow face, and uh, you would definitely love to know the name of the most famous detective, which is the most important character of this story. That is Sherlock Holmes. As you can see, the name of the author, Arthur Conan Doyle. and he is the person who has created this character that is we know with the name sherlock holmes so let us proceed further and know and understand the story in detail and we all know how this author has used irony suspense and humor in his work let us proceed further to know about the author first as i have the habit of explaining about the author first now proceed further You can see his full name is Sir Arthur Ignatius Conan Doyle. Okay, big name he has, and uh, in short, if we talk about, he was a writer and also a physician. That's why you can you can see the use of science in his work of Sherlock Holmes. That's why he has created there a character called Doctor Watson, who helps in all the. a field of science with his character Sherlock Holmes and then you can see he was born in the year 1859 in Edinburgh that is in Scotland his father was Charles Altamont Doyle and mother was Mary and both of them were Irish Catholic they were Irish Catholic though Arthur did not accept Catholic he rejected in his later life and he was sent to Stonyhurst college and then he went to university of edinburgh medical school from where he had got his education as physician but his uh, love toward literature was still there in him though he though he was very much busy in his studies of biology medical science he was in he was busy in that but his love for the literature was still there and we can see in his work his first work was a uh, study in a scarlet and that there in that uh, work he had discovered a character called sherlock holmes and then with it dr watson because they definitely you know the technicalities of being a detective you must have a good hand a first hand knowledge of science and you or maybe you must be assisted by someone so dr watson is an assistant to sherlock holmes definitely it is not the last work you can see the other works are given here the mystery of flumber and the narrative of john smith uh, round the raid the hound of the baskerville is interesting and scary too and unfortunately he died in the year 1930 at crowborough in uk So this isn't very short about this author. Now let us proceed toward uh, the story. But before that, we have to know one more thing. That is the word meanings. Brisk. Brisk means uh, lively, active. You are active. Okay. Now then, page boy. Page boy means a servant boy, not a servant girl. Page boy means a so page word is basically used for boy servant. Okay. Next, practice economy. It means that you don't waste your money. you use your money very carefully because you don't have much then judicious means you are a man of wisdom you do everything thinking on it and you don't just jump on anything incognito it means that you try to hide your identity and you will see this word is used in google when you when you search some page so there comes the option incognito next is strange means that you don't have a good relation with anyone you don't uh, share a good relation you got no more close to someone and comfortably off means wealthy and staggered staggered here it means astonished okay I means surprised amazement now the stroll walk slowly then we have the word leave it leave it means generally leave it means word pell and pell means you know something uh, which has more of yellow color and bit of uh, white ap- appears in it is mantle and notice the spelling m a n t l e it means a cloth from the front which is open like a coat like a robe okay you wear and the other word is m a n t e l c m a n t e l mental and this mental means 
that is a place a shelf over the what called above the fireplace or anywhere you make you make a shelf that is what called now then is bonnet simple hat is struck down means you are completely surprised astonished saying something implore request and i this i explained you already mental piece now unscrupulous means a person without any ethic without any moral immoral person now agitation here it means great excitement agitation and then entreaty means request okay so here i have explained you the meanings of this words hope you have understood let us proceed further first of all the important character definitely it is used here sherlock holmes a famous detective then his friend dr watson he is a physician it seems like uh, arthur finan has given his appearance his place to dr watson and he is also a companion they both stay in the same apartment okay they're good friend next is mr grand munro he is the person who has brought the case to uh, sherlock holmes and then if he is the wife of grand munro okay again against her only he brought the case you will definitely see who this woman is uh but she is a woman who takes care of the yellow face girl next is the yellow face it is a little girl and she is a girl child of ifi we will see this thing again john hebron john hebron was the diseased husband of ifi he was the first husband of ifi and mr cranman row would become the second husband okay the place is baker street where baker street is the place where shallow comes and watson stay they live in, in an apartment and the person grand munro he has come to meet shallow comes let us see the story in detail when the story begins shallow comes and dr watson they were not at home when they were out for a walk at evening a visitor that is mr grand munro he came to meet comes he did not find him though he found what their page boy he inquired about sherlock holmes the man waited there for a while but he was so much agitated excited that he shouted at the boy at the page boy and by mistake he forgot he had left his pipe there uh, in the apartment of sherlock holmes when sherlock holmes and watson they came back at 5 o'clock where at the house at baker street they came to know about the story of the man the page boy he told everything about the man that he came and he behaved in this manner sherlock holmes was also a little bit moved uh, listening he was definitely at that time excited even that who could this man be to behave in this manner seeing the pipe holmes predicted about the man who came there who shouted there who was asking for sherlock holmes a man that is grand Monroe, he came there, and Sherlock Holmes, seeing his pipe, he predicted about the man that the man must value his pipe highly. Why? How did he know this thing? That the man, the man who had already left his pipe, forgetfully though, forgetfully he left his pipe. Then, if he had left the pipe there in somebody else's home, how would it be proved that he loved his pipe a lot? then there are some points discussed by sherlock holmes he said that the cost of the pipe must be 7 and 6 pence not very much 7 and 6 pence but not, not very much means 7 to 6 pence something like that but the pipe was amended repaired thrice with silver bands the pipe was repaired thrice with silver band and that silver band must have cost him more than the original cost means 7 and 6 pence it must be 100 pence something like that so he so he come to the conclusion that the man must be loving his pipe very much he must be giving his pipe highly uh, great import he must be giving his pipe great importance so he had prepared a thrice with silver band which cost him more than the cost of the original cost of the pipe then again he made other uh, what call suggestion about him is that the man must be muscular left handed 
excellent set of teeth, careless in his habit and well off. Just by seeing the pipe, Sherlock Holmes has the quality that he had predicted a great deal of information about the man. So now we can see here, so these are the things he had described and this thing, all these things proved correct. The man returned, he came back to Holmes. Before the man would speak his name, Sherlock Holmes already had spoken his name, Mr. Grand Munro. And that is what he had, Sherlock Holmes had noticed that written on his hat band. The story of the case explained by Grand Munro. Now there are certain phases you will see. The first one is the story he had brought, Grand Monroe had brought a case against his wife and he would he explain in detail that why certain things happened and why had he come to Sherlock Holmes for his help. Let's see. He told Sherlock Holmes dad that for three years he had been married. Three years ago he had married a girl, her name is Effie. For three years and he said it was a happy marriage and after that he had started explaining about his wife he said that his wife's name is Effie and she went to America where she married a man named Mr. Hebron and the man Mr. Hebron was a lawyer understood when before their marriage I'm talking about Effie's life before uh, she met Grand Munro okay now so first of all, Effie, when she was young, she went to America, where uh, she married a man called Mr. Hebron, a lawyer. And both of them, Mr. Hebron and Effie, they had a child. Unfortunately, both her husband, means Effie's husband, Mr. Hebron, and child, they died of yellow fever in America. This is what, of yellow fever in America. So when she was alone there, husband and the, and the child, both of them died. She was alone there. She came back to her maiden aunt at Painter in London, where she met Mr. Grand Monjo. So she came back from America. Okay. Now, but her husband was a rich man, a wealthy man. So when he died, he did not leave her as it is. He had left her comfortably off men's in a wealthy condition and she had the capital of 4,500 pounds, a huge sum, a good sum at that time. So this is the condition you see. When she came back to her uh, aunt, maiden aunt at Pena, she was just 25 and she at that time met Munro. Both of them fell in love with each other and they decided to get married and they did so. They got married. Both of them bought a villa at Norbury. Norbury is the place where they had uh, bought a villa. And in that place, they had uh, an inn, a hotel, two more houses, and a cottage facing their villa. And the cottage was almost empty. But Effie, both of them got married. And what, what she had done? She had made Mr. Munro the in charge of a property. Munro became the proprietor of a property and she had given all the property to him and both of them were living a very happy life. This three years of marriage, in this three years of marriage, she never demanded anything to him. Because a demand definitely must be fulfilled. All of a sudden, six weeks before this case, means Grand Munro, he came to meet Sherlock Holmes. From that time, I'm talking about you go back, okay? six weeks back means one and a half month back okay so in a half month back from this time when grand Munro came to meet Sherlock Holmes from this time one and a half month back what happened that uh, she demanded for a sum of hundred pounds he fulfilled her request since she used to call him her banker now then it was okay he forgot about it he gave the money he forgot about it he did not think about it Again, last Monday, from the day when he met Sherlock Holmes, from that last Monday, what he had noticed, that he had noticed that in the cottage, which was for eight months empty, remember, the cottage was for eight months empty, he found some inmates inside the cottage, I mean, some people. It can happen, definitely, maybe that someone 
someone must come and stay there. It may happen. This is, it is not uh, something strange like. But the thing is, he noticed that Cortez had some inmate. But the thing which was quite strange is the face. When Mr. Munro was walking rather strolling on the road, he found a face watching him. And that was a livid, dead, yellow face. Complete yellow face. Seeing the face, he was at that time uh, a bit afraid. He had never seen a face like that. He didn't understand that whether the face belonged to a man or a woman. But he could not understand. It was, he, definitely he was at that time complete, in, he was in complete confusion at that time. So what happened? What to be done? So he went to the house. He knocked at the door. A tall woman appeared out of the cottage. And her behavior was quite rude uh, in her appearance and manner. And she did not talk to him well. Though Mr. Munro, he wanted to help that woman. But the woman rejected him in a very grave manner. And her behavior was very rude that he did not uh, bother to talk to her again. But he was thinking about the story about the yellow face and the manner of the woman. He was continuously thinking about it. And then what happened that... So he discussed, he told all this thing to his wife at night and both of them went to sleep. When he was in half sleep that particular night when he had seen the face, when he was in half sleep, he noticed that his wife dressed on her mantle, mantle meaning I already told you, and bonnet. And she went off the room. But she returned back after 20 minutes. When she came back, he was sitting on the bed. Mr. Munro was sitting on the bed. And he asked her about her strange departure. And she angrily claimed that she was suffocating in the room. So she went out at the door to get fresh air. Though the way she was speaking, the gesture, her, her way of speaking revealed that she was concealing, she was hiding something from her husband. So he did not ask her anymore. He didn't want to uh, destroy his relation with her. But there are certain things which are disturbing him, like the yellow face, the behavior of that woman, tall woman, and the behavior of his wife at the very night. But he could not make out what could be the meaning of all these three. Then what he had seen, the next, the very next day, definitely they did not have a good night on that day. The next morning, even at the breakfast, they were not happy. They did not talk to each other. Grand Munro went out for his work and when he came back, he found his wife coming out of that same cottage where he had seen the yellow face at the window. Definitely at that time when he was thinking about that yellow face only, the tall woman only, and his wife came out from that particular uh, cottage, you can understand the condition of uh, Munro. And then when he had seen her and he tried to enter into the house she did not allow him to enter rather she hold uh, his sleeve and pulled him out of the gate Munro did not force anything to her rather rather she did not want to say anything rather Munro he said that rather he asked her to keep a promise what was the promise that she would never do anything without his knowledge means against his knowledge against his will, everything what she would intend to do, Mr. Munro must know this. This is a very important thing to keep a good and healthy relationship. Though if he at that time she promised and still she dragged her husband holding his sleeve, she did not allow him at all to enter the house because she told that if he would enter the house definitely it would disturb our relationship. Though he did not dare to do this thing because he loved his wife a lot. Then. Two days, everything was okay. Two days. After two days, when Munro, he went for his work and he returned back early. If he was missing, he directly went to the cottage and that was deserted. It means if he was not there, the yellow face, the yellow face was not there, not even the tall woman. It was deserted. He found his wife's picture on the metal piece and that picture was taken just three months ago. So, he came back and... That very night, he asked his wife, she did not reply anything, not reply about anything. And 
definitely that instance you can understand the condition the mental and the psychological condition of a person he was very much agitated he felt jealousy and then in anger he left home and did not meet her till the next day and next day he came to Sherlock Holmes only means previous day he left her and then um, he did not meet her anymore and he came to Sherlock Holmes so he wanted a conclusion of this story that what is exactly there in that house and how these people, the yellow face and the tall woman, all these people are related to uh, his wife. This is the story explained by Mr. Munro. Now let us understand now Sherlock Holmes' assumption of the case. Till now we have seen what Grand Munro had depicted about his wife about the problem. Now what conclusion did Sherlock Holmes take out? Please be careful, you may get confused listening to this. Now understand this thing that whatever I am going to explain now, this thing, all the scenario is here concluded only by Sherlock Holmes according to him. Now, he believed Sherlock Holmes after listening to the story of Grand Munro about his wife. He believed that his wife was married in America. This was his belief. But he did not believe that his wife's first husband was dead. According to him, the first husband was contracted with some disease only. Okay. So uh, we have seen that Grand Munro told that if he told him that his husband died of yellow fever and child also, Sherlock Holmes believed it was not the case. So when her husband, if his husband, when he was contracted with some disease, she fled away from him. She left him and came to England and changed her name. According to Sherlock Holmes, if he is not her name, if he is a name she had taken for her new husband, what was her real name? Sherlock Holmes did not know and nobody till now nobody knew. Then what she had done when she found that a new person had come into her life, she had started her life afresh. And for three years she had been in marriage and she was happy. She found that her position, her situation was good with her new husband. So she had shown what he had shown the death certificate of a man whom she had assumed as her husband. It means, uh, according to Sherlock Holmes, I have all told you that if his husband, the previous husband, was alive but contracted with some disease, so how would she show her uh, husband's uh, previous husband's certificate? So she must have shown somebody else's certificate. Again remember, this scenario which I am explaining you, this story uh, is the assumption of Sherlock Holmes listening to the story of uh, Grand Munro. Next. Then what happened according to Sherlock Holmes, when she came to England, she married Grand Munro, she was happy for three years. Suddenly her previous husband came to know about her life in England. He might have come to meet her or there might be some unscrupulous woman who was attached to the life of her husband, previous husband. Okay, It might be according to Sherlock Holmes, there was a uh, relationship of her previous husband, a woman. So both of them must have come to England to blackmail Effie. Her previous husband who was alive, who was contracted to disease or, or, and, or maybe there is a woman, some woman, some unscrupulous evil woman who is attached to the life of her husband. So both of them might have come to England to blackmail Ify. So when they had When they had tried to expose her, when they threatened Ify, that they would expose her, so she got afraid. So she had given them 100 pound which she had demanded from her husband one and a half month prior. Doing all this thing, after doing all this thing, uh, 
they, her, her previous husband and that woman, they did not stop. Okay, they came to the cottage as a newcomer. Her husband had already noticed the yellow face uh, in the window and the tall woman. So, her husband had already noticed. Then after that, he told, her husband told, we have seen that grandmother told his wife and she behaved in different manner means he did not reply and she went out. So, he said she went out at night only to inform those people, her previous husband and that woman, that her new husband had seen them. So, they must she tried to persuade them to leave. They must leave that place. Otherwise, her life would be in trouble. According to Sherlock Holmes, that, that night they did not leave. So, next morning she again went when her husband saw her coming out of the cottage. And they, she promised him that she would not do again. She made another attempt. There, what she had done, she went there taking her photograph. Two days after, on third day, she went... Uh, her husband found her photograph, the new husband, his grandmother found her photograph in the cottage. So, it, according to Sherlock Holmes, it might have happened that her previous husband and that woman demanded her photograph. So, she had taken that photograph to that cottage. So, that there would be a clash in the relationship between her new husband and uh, Ify. Okay, there is a great confusion. Please be careful and listen to me carefully. Okay. So when and she warned them, definitely she warned that Munro might come. So they all have deserted the cottage. When he entered, no one was there. Now let us see what is exactly the concluding part of the story. What is the real case? Let us see now. The reality of the case revealed by Ify. So what happened? Means and Munro was really confused. He wanted to know the reality. So, we have seen that he had gone to Sherlock Holmes for his help and Sherlock Holmes, after discussing with him and asking some question, he told him to inform. He told him to inform uh, him that whenever he found the people in the house, means the people in the cottage, it happened. Grand Monroe came back to his home. He found that inmates were there in the cottage. So, he informed Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes and Watson came. All of them entered the house forcefully. Though if he was there at the gate of the cottage, she wanted them not to get entered. But all of them entered. She had uh, disclosed everything. She she drew out. Means she had taken out a silver locket, and inside the locket, there is a picture of her dead husband, the previous husband, John Hebron. The man was strikingly handsome and intelligent too, but of African descent means a dark skinned man. So when he, the man was dark skinned, definitely there would be a clash between white people and the dark people. But the man was a noble man. So she, if he, she fell in love with him and both of them married against the will of Ify's parents. But if he sees well that she never regretted. She did never regret. She was always happy with him. But he died. But he died leaving a child. And she, the girl child, she uh, resembled her father. When she was also of dark skin. Understood? Though she was dark skin, so what? Uh, she definitely, um, definitely being a mother, she must love her child. So when Hebron died in America, her daughter was also very much ill. She left her daughter in America because of poor health in the custody of someone, one faithful Scotch woman and that woman, the tall, that tall woman whom Mr. Munro had seen at the gate of the cottage and who behaved very bad with uh, Mr. Munro. That tall woman is a Scotch woman. If he had seen hundred pound to that woman so that she would bring her daughter to that cottage and stay there. If he did not see her daughter for a long time and even her daughter's uh, health also improved a lot. So she demanded the Scotch woman to bring her daughter to that pina, with that particular place in England. And she kept them in the cottage so that she would be able to meet her daughter uh, at any time she wanted. These are the things she did not reveal to Munro about his daughter. 
maybe they would be she was in fear that she might lose his love after knowing after knowing about the daughter that she had a daughter even of dark skin so it may happen that grand monroe would not accept her and she would lose her new husband and her, and his love so she had covered her face with yellow color so that nobody would look her face and there would be a discussion these are all uh, realities she had disclosed in front of everyone As a concluding part, it happened that uh, if you thought her husband, she had lost her husband's love, but it didn't happen. I told you already, he lifted the girl, kissed her, and he held his wife's hand, and he had accepted both of them. The uh, story ends. But the last part is there. A very interesting part is this, that Holmes and uh, Watson, they came back to their apartment in Baker Street, and here... Home is quite upset, almost quite upset, and he told Watson one thing. Whenever Watson would find that Sherlock Holmes was getting a little overconfidence in his power, he, uh, the Watson, uh, if, if, if he found that Watson is out of his control and he started thinking that uh, he was the best person or the best detective uh, who could decipher all the cases, then he would become overconfident. So, Watson must whisper into his ear the word Norbury and he would come to his limit. What does he mean? He meant to say here, he, he meant to say here that first time in his life it happened that Holmes' assumption and predictions were proved utterly mistaken. Whatever he had assumed, whatever he had thought about Effie and her dead husband, all those assumptions were proved wrong. First time it ever happened to his life. So he understood that it might happen in future, he would become overconfident. So when the name Norbury would be whispered to his into his ear, definitely at that time he would understand that he must not be overconfident, must not feel very much proud of himself. He is also a human being and he must stick to his limit. That's what he meant to say. This is how we have finished this uh, yellow face. I hope you all have understood. If there is certain problem, you don't understand anything, definitely a confusion uh, may occur. You may comment me and I would see how would I help you all. I believe I would bring certain kind of more videos to you all. And you can also demand some videos which you want me to make. Thank you very much.